The term drum circle has been popularized in recent decades, and a lot of people use the term. They may or may not know exactly what that means, but they definitely have heard the term drum circle. Probably fewer people have heard the term music therapy or understand what music therapy is. There also has been a sort of blending and a misunderstanding of what those two terms mean in relationship to each other. I'm Kalani Das, a board-certified music therapist. I'm also the director of programs at Golden State Music Therapy, and I'm the Western Regional Representative for the American Music Therapy Association's Advocacy Committee. So these are my nine reasons to not use the term drum circle to define music therapy or describe what music therapists do. Now, some people might say, well, it's just a circle of people playing drums, so doesn't that make it a drum circle? And to that, I would say, no, not really, <laughs> because you can have people in a circle playing drums and you can teach a drum class, you can lead songs, you could do a drum along, you could tell a drum story, you could do a rhythm game, you can do all sorts of things in a circle with drums. That is not a drum circle. So you have to remember that a drum, that drum circle really means a certain type of drumming experience. It's not a synonym for group drumming, even if you're in a circle. Reason number one. The definition of a drum circle and the definition of music therapy are really quite different, even though they might look similar. A drum circle is a community-based, uh, rhythmic-based event where people come pretty much voluntarily or traditionally voluntarily to play music together that's co-created in the moment where everyone does what he or she feels like doing and basically contributes to the creation of a community based music experience. And the value that they get out of that is usually um, a, a community feeling, a community value. And there usually isn't, you know, somebody leading it or somebody directing it or any kind of pretense of leadership or ownership or direction. It's, it's really a combination. Uh, you could look at it as a pure democracy, if you will musically speaking. And that's really all it is. It's just a, a gathering where people jam together and play music and have a nice feeling and have fun, hopefully. The definition of music therapy is quite different. We have different relationships like therapist to client. We have responsibilities like therapist to client. Uh, the goals and objectives that music therapists create inside of their work are to help the client move along in their therapy goals. And it's very specific. The techniques that are used are very different from what a, let's say a drum circle facilitator or somebody leading a drum circle would use. Music therapy is guided by the profession, by the training, by the ethics, by all sorts of things, much in the same way that medicine is guided by medical practice as opposed to just, let's say health and wellness, for example. Reason number two, is that drum circles, or the word drum circle, actually has a kind of stigma. It's an American term. It cropped up in the 1960s to describe people playing in parks and at beaches, at concert parking lots, uh, very much associated with the hippie movement, the psychedelic movement, the counterculture movement. And no matter how much we may wish that it was a professional term or that it was only in a, a professional term that we could use it in a profession, in a clinical way, in a clinical setting, it's never going to not have that other meaning because that is the original meaning of the word drum circle. And that's the way people have used it for many, many, many years. And comedians will, and TV personalities will refer to drum circles at, meaning that kind of dancing around the campfire sort of meaning. So that's another thing to consider when we decide to use the term or not use the term in a professional context. Reason number three, the term drum circle is actually either misused or overused. Now, even though the term drum circle started off in a community sort of counterculture setting, it's been popularized by drum industries, drum manufacturers, trainers, and pushed into popular culture intentionally as a kind of branded way of playing music together. Now, of course, you can have lots of types of group drumming that are not drum circles. Um, but I've even heard people refer to a traditional West African drum ensemble as a drum circle. Or sometimes people will call a musical game a drum circle, or they'll call a ritual, uh, for example, Native American drumming, or 
uh, other forms of traditional indigenous drumming, they'll call those drum circles. Or they'll say, well, people in Africa have been doing drum circles for hundreds of years. All those statements and all those um, assertions are absolutely untrue. They're just taking a relatively new term that actually has a different meaning and applying it uh, like a blanket label across a wide range of drumming experiences. And I think that does two things. One, it does a disservice to the drum circle community, the people who actually do drum circles and participate in drum circles. It also blurs the meaning of all of the other kinds of community or group drumming experiences that we can create. And there are many of those types, and I'll leave a link down below so you can uh, find out more about all the different types of group drumming. But we don't want to just apply one subcategory, which would be drum circles, of group drumming to all types of group drumming. Reason number four is that the term drum circle is really not a part of music therapy and the profession. If you look back in music therapy literature, uh, there's virtually no mention of drum circles anywhere by any of any music therapy teacher. Now, while some drum circle teachers or drum circle facilitators may claim that drum circles are part of music therapy, um, I would say that that's probably not valid or that those people really aren't an authority in that area. So maybe they're just guessing or they're hoping or they're assuming that that would be the case. But if you look back in music therapy pedagogy, in the canon of music therapy literature, uh, you will basically not find any reference to drum circles, except some books like Susan Gardstrom's book, uh, Music Therapy Improvisation for Groups, that actually explicitly say that they are two different things, that it's not appropriate to use the term drum circle inside of music therapy. So those are the only references that I can find inside of the body of music therapy education. Reason number five is that between studying clinical improvisation techniques and strategies and um, and just taking a few drum lessons, learning about some of the instruments and maybe learning a few rhythms, um, that's all you need really to effectively create um, music therapy uh, drumming experiences. And that it's, it's completely unnecessary to take any sort of outside training, you know, other than maybe some drum lessons. But if you really look at clinical improvisation techniques, you'll find that all of the skills, all of the strategies, all of the techniques that you need to facilitate group drumming uh, in a number of ways, not just kind of in a drum circle improvisation way, but maybe in uh, compositional forms or even recreative music making, uh, you'll find that you have all of the techniques and skills you need to facilitate a group drumming experience without leaving the profession of music therapy. Reason number six is that we have to remember that anybody can facilitate a drum circle. So if you're a music therapist and you're telling people, you're telling your clients or you're telling the people that hire you that you're doing a drum circle inside of music therapy, you're also kind of telling them that somebody else who does a drum circle could do what you do, right? Because if you're doing a drum circle in music therapy or as music therapy, logically, not actually, but in some people's minds, that might mean that music therapy equals a drum circle, therefore a drum circle equals music therapy. And we know that that's not true, but that's what people might think. So a drum circle facilitator then all of a sudden is sort of equal to a music therapist in the minds of your clients or in the minds of the people who hire music therapists. And I think that would be misleading and that would be misrepresenting both music therapy and what a drum circle is. Reason number seven is that drum circles are really about having fun and they're about having a good time, making music with people, laughing, you know, maybe feeling, having an emotional or spiritual experience. They're about a lot of things, but they're really recreational in nature and expressive. They're, they're just fun musical experiences. That is not what music therapy is. <laughs> it's great if we have fun in music therapy, but you know, our responsibilities and our goals, our obligation to the clients extend far beyond just having fun. And even Remo Belli, the founder of Remo Drums said, well, I don't know what's gonna happen in this drum circle, but I know you're gonna have fun. And I think that honors the spirit of a drum circle, but we have to remember that music therapy is not just having fun with you know, playing music. In fact, that's exactly the kind of um, 
image of music therapy that I think as music therapists, we want to distance ourselves from to a degree because we want people to understand that we're actually addressing clients' therapeutic needs and we're doing a lot more than just helping them have fun. Reason number eight has to do with training and gaining skills. And I've heard some music therapists say that they went to a drum circle training and they use some of that in their work. And while you can certainly learn new things from anybody, and I'm a big fan of taking as many different trainings as possible. I try to learn from a lot of different people. I think there's a big difference between drum circle training and music therapy training, even if you use a couple techniques you used in the drum circle training in music therapy. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the same techniques actually exist within music therapy already. So you may think of them as drum circle techniques because that's where you learn them within that context. That does not mean that they don't exist inside of music therapy, that you needed to go outside of music therapy training to get those techniques. I think that's a big uh, misconception and maybe misrepresentation of what we do as music therapists. Of course we use drums in music therapy. Of course we use facilitative skills. Of course we do improvisation. Those are all well documented in music therapy pedagogy. And if you just look around inside the music therapy community of educators and resources and trainers, you'll quickly find that there's an abundance of quality training available by music therapists for music therapists. Reason number nine is that if we use the term drum circle, it can really be confusing to music therapy clients and the people who hire music therapists. And I touched on this earlier, but it's important to understand that because drum circles have a sort of stigma, And because drum circles have a definition that is different than music therapy, if we tell our clients or or maybe the family members of clients or the people who hire us that we did a drum circle in music therapy, it's kind of like saying, well, I guess we weren't really doing music therapy then. We were just doing a drum circle. We were just having fun. We were just doing whatever. The clients were just doing whatever. Um, And, you know, that's not necessarily something that we want to do. We also do then reinforce that message. I mentioned earlier that, well, if we're just doing a drum circle, then why don't we just hire a drum circle facilitator instead of a music therapist? And that's certainly not uh, something that we want to do from within the profession. So to summarize, I think we can take away a few points, and that is that drum circles have a different definition than music therapy. Drum circles are a little bit stigmatized, and they have a definition that goes back to the 1960s Even if you learned about drum circles in another country where you don't share the American uh, definition, that's still part of the definition. So that's always gonna be there. The term drum circle has been misused, it's been overused, it's been used to describe a lot of things that aren't drum circles. So I think we can actually honor the concept of drum circles by focusing and using the original definition and keeping that intact and not spreading it and having it expand to include all kinds of group drumming. Clinical improvisation with a few drum lessons will more than supply any music therapist with all of the kind of group drumming skills they need to play the instruments, to create music, and to facilitate that group music process. Music therapy is about more than just having fun. Anybody can facilitate a drum circle. You don't have to have special training. Uh, Anybody can do it with some training, a lot of training, no training, uh, it's okay. And the goal is really to have fun as opposed to music therapy, which is an allied healthcare profession, which requires the person to go through a college degree, go through an internship, pass the board exam, uh, be responsible and accountable in everything that they do to represent the profession. Drum circle training is for drum circles. Music therapy training is for music therapy. Even though you can go outside of the field to get some supplemental training, it's not required and it's not necessary. If I'm working as a music therapist, I don't want the people who hire me or my clients or anybody to be confused as to what I'm doing in music therapy or what skills I'm using as a music therapist. So I wouldn't say I'm doing a drum circle in music therapy. I would say we're gonna do some drumming We're gonna do some music games. We're gonna do some rhythm uh, experiences. Uh, Usually I do a lot of songs. I'm using more traditional based uh, rhythmic experiences that I pull from traditional music. But even if it's just improvised 
as a drum circle is improvised, I'm still employing clinical improvisation techniques that are specific and actually unique to the profession of music therapy. So I wouldn't mislabel that a drum circle. My hope is that people will take this moment to further their education. There'll be some links down below this video to help them do that. And whatever people do in music, I think it's wonderful. It's just important that we understand what we're doing, the definitions of what we call what we're doing, um, why we're using certain labels, so that we can represent what we do responsibly and ethically and serve the people we serve in the best way possible.